Hello, welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 27 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the ASP.NET radio button list control. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 24, 25 and 26 of this video series. In ASP.NET, there are several list controls like drop-down list, checkbox list, bulleted list, list box, and radio button list. We have spoken about drop-down list, checkbox list, and list box in the previous sessions of this video series. So just like every other list control, a radio button list is also a collection of list item objects. Items can be added to the radio button list in the HTML source at design time or in the code behind file at runtime. Radio button list, like any other sort, uh, list control, supports data binding. For example, a radio button list can be bound to a database table or an XML file. In the previous sessions of this video series, we have actually seen how to bind a drop-down list to an XML file and to a database table. So we exactly bind the radio button list also in the similar way. Checkbox list is generally used when we want to present the user with multiple choices from which we want him or her to select one or more options. But then if you want to restrict the user to select only one option, then we can make use of a radio button list. That is, if we want to present the user with mutually exclusive choices, then radio button list should be used. Let's look at some of the useful properties of a radio button list control. You know, most of these properties are actually very similar to a checkbox list control, especially the repeat direction, repeat columns, and repeat layout properties. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's drag and drop a radio button list control. And we know that just like any other list control, a radio button list control is also a collection of list item objects. And these list item objects can be added in the HTML source or programmatically. So let's use this radio button list to display a list of favorite colors. OK. And I want the user to select only one favorite color. And by default, if you look at this, the items are arranged in vertical uh, layout. If you want to change that to horizontal layout, then we can make use of repeat direction property. By default, the repeat direction is vertical. So if we change that to horizontal, you know, the items are arranged in a horizontal layout and then we have this repeat columns and again this is very similar to a checkbox list control by default at zero which means all the list items are shown in one column but if I want them to be spread across two columns I can change that to two and they will they are spread across two columns now let's put it back to zero Okay, another interesting property is the table, you know, repeat layout property. And if you look at this property, it takes four values, table, flow, unordered list, and ordered list. Let's look at each of them. Now, by default, the repeat layout is table. And if I run this as it stands, what's going to happen, if you look at this, there are four colors here, which meaning four radio button list items. If I right-click on this web form and then view source, okay, look at the HTML that is generated. Now, the we are actually using here a table to display you know these radio button lists okay and the reason why it's doing that is because you have set the repeat layout to use table Okay. On the other hand, if I set it that to flow, and if I run this, what's going to happen? It doesn't use the table if you view the HTML source. So right-click, view source. Look at that. It's not using the table now to present these radio buttons. Okay. So the other options that we have are you know, unordered list. Let's pin this down. So unordered list. Now look at this. The moment I change this to unordered list, I'm going to get an error. So there was an error rendering the control. The unordered list and ordered list layouts only support vertical layout, which means in the repeat direction, you have to set that to vertical to use this unordered list and ordered list repeat layouts. Okay, so unordered list, the name says it's an unordered list which shows, you know, the bulleted points. So if we run this now, you know, these radio button list items will be generated along with that, you know, uh, bullets there. If you want numbers instead of bullets, then I just use ordered list. So now if we run this, 
obviously as you can see here it's rendering the numbers okay but keep in mind the ordered list and unordered list repeat layout uh, can be used only when the repeat direction is vertical okay let's put this back to table and let's change the repeat direction to horizontal all right so now let's do a quick demo you know where we select these radio buttons and then I want to uh, view the text value and index and this is very much similar to a drop-down list because if you remember in a drop-down list you can select only one item and the same is the case with a radio button list you can select only one item from the radio button list okay so obviously if you are able to select only one item there's no point in looping through each list item object within the radio button list all you can do to select the text value and index you can use the selected item property and selected index property of the radio button list okay so let's drag and drop a button so whenever I click this button we want to retrieve the selected item text value and index and how do we do that response dot right so text is equal to radio button list one dot selected item dot text and if you remember from the previous sessions of this video series if the user has not selected any item then the selected item uh, you know when you try to retrieve the text property of the selected item you know when it is null then a null reference exception is will be thrown so to avoid that you can actually check if the selected item is not null or you can also use radio button list one dot selected index not equal to minus one we have talked about that when we are discussing our list box control okay so we have the text we want the value and the index So the value is equal to radio button one list one dot selected item dot value. And if we want the index dot selected index, since that is an integer, let's use two string method to convert that to string and to have this properly displayed when it renders on the page, put an HTML break there. alright so now if we run this as you might expect when we click that button you know it will show us the selected items text value okay so red on the other hand if I select look at that as soon as I select the radio button it clears the one what the other one which is already selected that's because radio button selections are mutually exclusive okay fine now let's say I want to uncheck this you know by I, I selected this option but I don't want to select any of these options and I want to simply you know don't want to select any of these radio buttons now is that possible now the only way to make that possible is run the page once again or navigate navigate away from that page and navigate to that page back you know you will have them unselected okay but then on the page is there a way you know once if I select it there's no way I can select that but we can do that programmatically probably we can provide them with a button control you know and then they can click that button to remove all the selections so if you look at this one there is a button called clear selection and this is going to clear all the selections you know that you made so let's program that now so let's drag and drop a button control onto the web form and let's change the text of that one to clear selection okay double click that the event handler gets generated now again keep in mind you know to clear the selection the easiest way is radio button list one dot selected index is equal to minus one and there are a lot of people I have seen you know a lot of articles on the internet you know people actually looping through each list item you know they, they lot of people does this for each list item a lie in radio button list one dot item so they loop through each list item 
and then they say if li dot selected then what they do is li dot you know selected is equal to false do we really have to write so much of code now with this kind of a code there are two problems one it's more code two you're unnecessarily looping through each list item object okay so the best way is to simply set the selected index to minus one no matter which item the user has selected the moment you set the in selected index to minus one it's not going to select anything within that radio button list so let's run this now and see in action if it's working as expected okay I select that click this button okay green my my selection and then the moment I click clear my selection look at that nothing is selected there on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C-Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day